Welcome into Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. I'm Megan Payton. We have our mailbag show today, but first, we are very close to 7,000 subscribers. Please help us out here at Steelers Talk. We are 15 people away. You can be the 7,000th subscriber here on our channel. We promise to keep you updated on all Steelers offseason news. And the first news we do have for you today is that defensive coordinator Keith Butler has officially announced his retirement. We kind of expected this, but it is now official. Butler served as the Steelers DC for seven seasons, but he actually has been with the Pittsburgh Steelers organization for 19 years before his coaching career. He had a long playing career as well with the Seattle Seahawks as a linebacker. I know that you guys probably have some you know, different opinions on Butler, how this defense has been the last couple of years, especially this past year. But I don't think that we can discredit what he's done for this organization. Spending this much time there, it's definitely a bittersweet moment as Pittsburgh moves on after Butler's retirement. Uh, Butler said in a statement, it is an emotional day as I announce I'm retiring from my football coaching career. I've spent every year since 1990 as a coach in the NFL and the NCAA, but the time is right for me to walk walk away after a successful career, both playing and coaching the game I love. And Mike Tomlin, I know that his relationship was very close with Butler. He said, I appreciate everything Keith Butler did for me personally and our entire team and coaching staff during the 15 years I spent with him here in Pittsburgh. Keith and I began our friendship in 1996 at the University of Memphis and have remained close to this day. He helped build some of the greatest defenses in the league during our time together in Pittsburgh. And I'm appreciative of his dedication and commitment to making our players better on and off the field. I wish Keith and his family all the best with retirement all right so clearly now the Steelers are going to need to move on find a different guy and I'm hoping that this can help the Steelers maybe shift their thought with their defensive scheme so I'm asking you guys now do you want us to do a defensive coordinator replacement video we like to do what you guys want us to do here at Steelers talk so speak it up let us know what you think if you want us to do one type Y for yes or if you'd rather us stick to something else type N for no all right we are moving into our mailbag questions these are the questions that you guys ask us by using hashtag Steelers and by being subscribed to our channel so the first question coming in today is from Steelers fan 2288 hashtag Steelers should the Steelers cut Joe Schober and draft a linebacker like Devin Lloyd or Nicobe Dean to pair aside Devin Bush all right, so before I answer this, let's just look at what's going on in the linebacker room right now. So clearly it's going to change with this offseason. We've got a couple of restricted free agents. That's Spillane, Marcus Allen, what's going to happen with them. But other than that, these guys are on contracts. Devin Bush has another year left. Joe Schobert has another couple of years left. TJ Watt. We know signed that big extension, Alex Highsmith. Most of these guys are still in contract with Pittsburgh. But we talk about Devin Bush, as the question says. Devin Bush wasn't so great this season. If we're being completely honest, he did have some games where, you know, it was a little bit of improvement. But Devin Bush, I'd say, kind of hurt Pittsburgh this year. Now, he does have another year left on his contract. So, yeah, they'll probably end up keeping him. They could cut him, but they're going to lose some money doing that. So you talk about a guy like Nakobe Dean. Could they bring in him, help out with this uh, linebacker room? He's a guy that I do think that they should watch out for. He had 10 and a half tackles for loss, 72 tackles, two interception, for, uh, two forced fumbles. Now, these guys are really good. Obviously, you would love them on your roster. Can that happen, though? Devin Lloyd, again, another guy that is very impressive in 2021, 22 tackles for loss, four interceptions, one forced fumble, and 111 tackles. Now, here's the problem with both of these guys. They are going to most likely go in the first round. So the Steelers are in an interesting position this offseason because they've got a lot of areas they've got to figure out. Clearly, the glaring one being who's going to be quarterback. So if you decide to go the route of linebacker, you could be missing out on filling up a different role that you might have wanted to get in the first round. So I'll ask you this. Do you think the Steelers should draft a linebacker in round one? 
Go to the comments right now. Let me know what you think. It depends on what they do with the quarterback room for me. If they can get a guy like Rodgers or Russell Wilson, sure, draft a linebacker, but they might not have that option. So go right now. Let me know. Type one for yes if you think linebacker is the move in the first round or type two for no if you're choosing a different position. All right, moving on. Next question from Santiago Sepia1. Sep1, sorry, I totally butchered that name. Hashtag Steelers. Do you think uh, Kevin Colbert will retire after drafting a QB for Steelers going forward or will try to improve the overall team and leave the opportunity for the next guy to draft a possible quarterback? Okay, so there has been a lot of rumors that Colbert is going to retire, leaving the question of whose decision is this going to be as we look about who are the Steelers going to have at the quarterback position? Are they going to draft a guy? Is this going to be Mike Tomlin making this call? Is it going to be Kevin Colbert or is it going to be a new GM. Here's what NFL.com had to say about Kevin Colbert's contract. He said Colbert's contract runs through the 2022 NFL draft, and he has told people he intends to stay on the job through then, sources say. But while he has not been definitive in conversations with those close to him, Colbert has acknowledged that it is likely his last season, and the expectation is he'll retire sooner rather than later after the draft. So he's run the player personnel since 2000. Kevin Colbert's been a huge factor and been a huge role into deciding who the Steelers decide to draft, decide to bring in. So now's a major draft year. What are they doing with the quarterback situation? He's an amazing talent evaluator, in my opinion. I think Colbert's done a fantastic job in the NFL with the Steelers. But the question becomes, is he going to make this decision? I could see him and the Steelers drafting a QB and working together with Mike Tomlin and then making the shift after the quarterback situation has at least been figured out to the point of draft. Now, they could go a different route where Butler or just kind of st Colbert just steps back a little bit, says, hey, you know what? I'm going to let a new guy kind of make this call. But I'll ask you guys, who do you think should have the responsibility of drafting the next quarterback? Should it be Kevin Colbert or should it be the next GM? If you think it should be Colbert, type KC in the comments. Or if you think it should be a new guy, the next general manager, you can type NG. All right, so I've got something fun to tell you about. If you are still repping the Steelers, even though they're out of the playoffs, guys, do not be a Fairweather fan. Put on your Steelers gear, and I've got a really cool combo to tell you guys about. If you go to chatsports.com slash Steelers combo, you can get this shirt and hat deal. It's 25% off. It's a great deal because, again, it's licensed stuff. It's good quality, and it's pretty much two things for the price of one. So make sure you go check this out. As sizes are running out, they're going quick because they're cheap and they're good for everything gifts for yourself. Chatsports.com slash Steelers combo to get a hat and t-shirt for pretty much the price of one. All right, our next question is coming in from Ramtick. Hashtag Steelers. What is the chance of us getting Russ like the percent chance? All right, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd say that it's less than 20% likely going to happen because Russell Wilson, first of all, we don't even know if the rumors are true and that he does want to leave Seattle. Obviously, this is a topic that came up last year. It's coming up again this year. But first of all, we don't even know if he is going to leave Seattle. Now, let's just say he is, say that the Seahawks are on board with that. Russell Wilson wants out. Well, the Steelers are not going to be the only team that want him. There is going to be a long line of different organizations that are trying to get Russell Wilson. And so the asking process price is going to be very high. And unfortunately, when we hear about these Russell Wilson rumors, we hear about what his agent's saying, what Russell Wilson is saying. The Steelers haven't really been tied to that. Doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that we've heard of different teams that have a little bit of a higher, you know, rumor probability of actually getting Russell Wilson. But I will give you guys a mock Russ trade. It will be high and it will be greedy, but this is what I think it might take to get Russell Wilson. So the Steelers receive Russ and the Seahawks receive 2022 and 2023 first round picks. They also receive the 2022 second round pick and then they'll receive the 2023 fourth round pick. Now, if I'm being real honest with you guys, 
I don't even know if the Seahawks would do this. They might have to give up even more just to get Russell Wilson, meaning they might have to give up three first-round picks, give up their 2024. I'm not sure how greedy Seattle plans on being, but looking at this trade right now, if you could have Russell Wilson and this is what it took, would you make this trade? Go to the comments right now, type T for trade or type P for pass. All right, our next question coming in from Big Mac. Hashtag Steelers. Do you think the Steelers will bring back Juju? I sure hope we do because he is the ultimate team first type of guy. I agree completely with that. And my prediction is yes. I think that the Steelers do want Juju back. And it seems like Juju wants to be back. I think it would be a win-win for the organization and for Juju. I do think that it's a good dynamic duo. I do think that Juju is a great team leader. He's a guy you want in your locker room. But Juju has answered these questions all kind of pointing towards him staying in Pittsburgh. He said, I've said it before and I have the same stance. I'd love to be Pittsburgh for life. I hope we can make this happen this offseason. I want to be a part of this franchise's return to glory. It's not a matter of if, but when and I hope I'm wearing black and gold celebrating a Super Bowl with these fans when it happens. So that I take as, hey, Juju wants to be back. Can they get to a deal that makes sense to him? Is he going to get paid enough? Can they reach an agreement? But it sounds like Juju wants to be back. I can't imagine the Steelers not wanting him back. I do think that this is going to get done. But if you guys want Juju back in 2022, let's put some good Juju in the air. Go and like this video if you want Juju Smith-Schuster back in Pittsburgh for 2022. All right, next question coming in from Jack Pushing P. Are there any offensive linemen in the draft slash free agents who the Steelers could get this offseason? So offensive line is going to be an area that I think the Steelers will focus on in the draft and free agency. It's an area that they struggled with a lot. They had a lot of rookies. And so, you know, unfortunately, you look at the draft and you say, hey, we did this route kind of of the last couple of years trying to bring in rookies. How improved would it be? Now, I think Bernard Rayman, that's a guy that I really like. Uh, you know, Daniel Falalele, how do you, Falale, he is one of, Falele, that's how you say it, but he is one of my favorite offensive line prospects. He's a massive guy. He's 6'8". He's like 380 pounds. So if they were going to get anyone, I'd look at him. But you can take a peek at this list. Unfortunately, though, with offensive linemen coming out of college, it's hard to really know how dominant they are going to be once they enter the NFL. So they could go the route of draft. They also could go the route of free agency. Now, there's a couple guys that I think would be very fun and entertaining to look at. Brandon Sheriff being probably the most valuable O-line out of the options of free agent guys. I think Eric Fisher could be another interesting choice. Trent Brown. These are all guys that have had experience clearly in the league, have made some bit of an statement, and I think could be an improvement from what they're currently dealing with because it has not been pretty for the Steelers offensive line. They had a couple games where I felt like they stepped up, but ultimately Mike Tomlin and the Steelers team is going to need to figure out a way to improve this offensive line. So guys, stay updated. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel because there's a lot of offseason news and rumors coming up about the Pittsburgh Steelers. And of course, we can always talk defensive coordinator replacements.